the most confusing domain expansion we've come across so far in Jujutsu Kaisen. A gambler's mentality thrives on one sole motivator, and that is to win no matter the cost. Of course, this entails a crazy amount of risks. So, to commit to such a gamble takes someone who's either remarkably brave or incredibly stupid, and that is exactly what Kinji Hikari and his domain expansion Idle Death Gamble represent. Holding on to this idea even in the face of death, it is unique in its effect and is unlike anything we've seen in the series before. Just like a gambler who manipulates outcomes and plays to favour themselves, what Idle Death Gamble could be considered as is a cheat code in the Jujutsu world. It doesn't really have a one-shot technique or instant kill effect, but it's a domain expansion that perfectly resonates with Hikari and his personality to a T. But how far would a gambler like Hikari go to ensure that victory is certain? Before we dissect Hikari's insanely confusing domain expansion, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit that notification bell to stay updated with my latest uploads. This video will contain spoilers from the manga. As for someone like Hikari, this domain expansion is objectively a selfish power, which makes Hikari such a dangerous individual. This was perfectly showcased when he first fought against Kashimo, but there's also a huge problem with it. Yo, why is he looking at me like that? What's up, little bud? You got a staring problem, pal? Like what, dude? He's just looking at you. He's a baby. He's just Look at his face. Dumb little face. Stop. Yo, Zan, get your boy, dog. Hey, hey. It is complete and utter nonsense, or in simpler terms, confusing. And for that reason alone, I absolutely love it. Because in a world where you have individuals creating a divine malevolent shrine, a void, or even bringing the darkness into our realm, simply being a gambler's paradise is something so unique which makes Idle Death Gamble stand out as one of the best domain expansions we've seen so far in the series. If Hikari were to be pinned against the wall against those who reign superior to him in technique alone, this man with his broken ability would simply become invincible with just a hand sign and luck on his side. But with that said, why don't we put ourselves through hell to understand Hikari's domain expansion? The first bit of dissecting we'll be doing is the name of this domain expansion, where it stems from, its Japanese meaning, and if it has some sort of hidden history behind it, since we do know how much Akutami loves including Japanese folklore and religious symbolism into JJK. Anyways, what is interesting about Hikari's domain expansion is of course what the name exactly represents. From first glance, what the name Idol Death Gamble invokes is someone playing along the lines of life and death, which is exactly what its power brings about. Now as for the word idol, there are a couple explanations of the word, but what seems most fitting given the context is an idea of someone who is vacant or empty in both body and mind, going through motions without much consideration to the effect of behaving in such a way, which for compulsive gamblers is a perfect description where they tend to get sucked into this zone of gambling, forgetting their surroundings, and just go with this mindless flow. Marge, we need to talk. You're spending too much time at the casino, and I think you may have a problem. I won $60 last night. Woohoo! Problem solved! And obviously, onto the next word, there's really no need to explain it, as death is just as it seems, the permanent ending of a life. Which is ironic considering Hikari is one of the few characters in Jujutsu Kaisen in which we haven't seen him perform the act of killing. Now for the epitome of his cursed technique and his approach to life and fights. The very essence of his soul is that of a gambler, which is used in the name of his domain, Idle Death Gamble. The definition of someone who puts something special at risk in the hope of a greater reward, typically associated with people that lose money. In essence, gamblers used to be very refined and intelligent people that would take calculated risks in the hopes of a reward that was tenfold of their original bet. And I think for Hikari that is a better representation for him as a whole. In Japanese however their direct translation depicts someone who is the operator of a casino, which again emphasises Hikari's desire to control like with his fight club. The first rule of fight club is, you do not talk about fight club. And the eighth and final rule, if this is your first night at fight club, 
You have to find it. Now let's figure out the environment in which Hikari's domain expansion embodies and what it's supposed to represent, sparing no time from his introduction to pull out his broken ability against Charles. To activate his domain expansion, Hikari gestures in a way that is reflective of the Mudra of Benzai Ten, who is one of the seven lucky gods of Japan, looking like a guidebook full of information you'd find in a game's character profile screen, which is unfortunate because it only gets more confusing from here. Reach actions and chance ups each have their own unique visuals that are represented by certain aspects from a romance manga and storyline where each background correlates to a certain level of luck that has been achieved. Huh? With so many aspects happening all at once, it's hard not to sympathise with Charles. When first activated, the domain's environment is relatively simple as it is an empty background with one distinct feature. These are train gates, or better known as turnstiles, that surround the opponent caught in the domain expansion in a circle. This is what is known as the normal stage. Throwing his ball, which can either be green, red or golden, a specific character card appears with Hakari as the environment shifts into one of the potential scenarios. Depending on how it plays out, the scenario either shows the character passing through a gate or is reverted back to the beginning or normal stage. Golden Experience Requiem eats your heart out. Now what exactly do these scenarios and environments represent? It all draws from a fictitious piece of romantic comedy that exists in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen, and this manga is called The Private Railway Pure Love Train by Nakamura Kandisan. Now in a scenario where the hype level is much greater, the doors of trains are seen becoming golden, and the environment represents a typical train station beaming with lights. The train passes as we see the two protagonists of the fake manga interacting with each other, which again is dependent on the luck and hype of Hakari during that point in time. Thankfully the most confusing aspect of his domain expansion environment is over, because it is much easier to understand when he's fighting against Kashimo, followed by music activating his domain expansion once more with the jackpot activated, the turnstiles seem to swarm and fly past as though they're trains themselves. And once again, a scenario following a character either on a train or catching one represents Hakari's luck to be. So, with the complicated nature of his domain's environment and his moving nature out of the way, as anyone possibly could hope right now, let's finally talk about its powerful effect, which honestly is less confusing than everything else. Just getting there is a hassle. What really makes Hakari's domain expansion so deadly is the granting of unlimited cursed energy. As mentioned before, the goal of activating Idle Death Gamble is to achieve a jackpot which gives Hakari 4 minutes and 11 seconds of unlimited cursed energy. Now that in itself is pretty broken, but the implications it entails truly makes it a terrifying power to come across. Firstly, due to his rough cursed energy and his output level, managing to shock Hajime Kashimo by outright bypassing cursed energy barriers, this next power however truly represents Hakari in all his glory and this is with his near immortality. Due to such a sheer high output of cursed energy, not only does he have access to reverse cursed techniques that he can regenerate blown off limbs, it is an instinctual near automatic benefit granted to him whenever he activates a jackpot, going so far as to be able to counteract even poisonous attacks which is complicated to do by itself. Obviously being able to achieve such a thing is completely overpowered and somewhat unfair. That's why it's a great thing domain expansions can only be activated infrequently, unless you're Hakari, because he counteracts the fatigue caused by using such a technique. If he reaches his jackpot, theoretically and somewhat practically, Hakari can activate his domain expansion over and over again until he wins. But obviously getting it is a hard thing to acquire, right? Well this is Hakari we're talking about. A gambler through and through, and a true gambler always has an ace up their sleeve, which is perfectly summarised by his one line, you need the skill to capitalise on your luck, which is exactly why he's such a perfect character to have such an ability. As a gambler his best asset thrives upon trying again, which through his technique he can do, either with probability changes, time reductions, or even spade or spins to activate his technique. Hakari can skew a probability of 1 in 239 to be an over 75% chance of activating. In Hakari's own words, if he lands a jackpot by rolling three of the same characters, he will be awarded. 
But what is Hikari's greatest asset? That is of course his luck and intuition, which in tandem with his domain expansion, makes him a threat unlike any other. When speaking about idle death gamble, it's easy to write it off as overly complex, because to be quite frank it really is confusing. I mean tell me you understood this at a first or even third glance. But it is something I appreciate in the world of Jujutsu Kaisen, something to admire about Gege Akutami's writing, in a world where abilities can be so simplistic. Something that is so inherently off the wall, makes sense as people are constantly having to explain their ability. So what better way to get an edge than to make it as confusing as possible? So what exactly makes Akari's domain expansion so complicated? Well it's actually quite easy to understand what it does, a self-serving ability that grants him unlimited cursed energy and cursed techniques that allow him to make that easier to achieve through the manipulation of probability. It's just the road to get there which makes it absolutely and ridiculously complicated, but as I said before the ambition behind it is what truly makes it incredible, and it's not until we start talking about the scenarios which are created by his domain's environment that the true complications arrive, because it's a lot of information to try digest all at once, and the names are just too long, but in his basic form, it all relies solely on luck, which is the most prominent characteristic of Hakari. Now as it stands I don't think there's ever been a technique that is quite as confusing as Idle Death Gamble. Kirara's is up there, but I think the funniest thing about this is that it all seems unintentional on Akutami's behalf to make it so confusing, and honestly I do truly believe there will be a couple of Jujutsu techniques in the near future that stand as way more confusing than Hakari's, but as of right now, there is no greater domain expansion worthy of being titled as the most confusing. Of course with that being said, that officially brings this video to an end, so the question has to be asked, did you understand Hakari's domain expansion at all when it was first revealed, or do you even understand it right now, and where do you think it ranks amongst the others we've seen in the series so far? Me personally, I think Hakari's effect is certainly one of, if not the strongest we've seen, it's just unfortunate that he stands as a grade 1 sorcerer, due to his personality and lack of drive to pursue true strength because with his insane intellect, luck and broken ability, he will definitely become one of the strongest in the series with a change in attitude. But anyways be sure to let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. As always like this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one.